Welcome to Twisted Fibers Designs. I'm Shauna, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a griddle stitch washcloth. I love making these washcloths because they work up really easy. They're pretty beginner friendly, and they make great gifts to give away or just really nice to use around your house. And you can either use them in your kitchen or use them in the bath. I think it's a really economical way to have a nice washcloth because they hold up much better than the ones that you buy from the store. So I'm gonna be using some 100% cotton yarn. This is peaches and cream yarn. It's pretty cheap, it's like $2, I think. And um, I'm using an eye hook or a 5.5 millimeter hook. This is actually one size up from what the recommended um, hook size is that they request on the yarn, but I just like the way that it makes it a little bit looser. But if you want to use the hook that your yarn suggests, that's probably a good way to go. It kind of just depends on how loose or tight that you crochet. So my finished size is about eight by eight. If you want to make it bigger or smaller, you're going to increase or decrease in increments of two stitches. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're gonna start by making a slip knot. So I take the yarn and I wrap it around my first two fingers and hold it there underneath of my third finger. Take this first loop, slide it over the other one, pull that one out and pull down. Slide it onto my hook and pull on the working yarn side and that'll tighten it up. You don't want it to be too tight. And then we're gonna chain 26. Now I'm going kind of slow in case that you are new to crochet, just so that you can see how I'm making my chain. Okay, so I have 26 chains. We're gonna skip three chains. So that means that we're gonna work into the fourth chain from the hook. So we don't count this one that's on our hook. We're gonna start with this one that is below this loop here, below our hook. So we're gonna count one, two, three, and we're gonna go into this fourth one. And that first three chains there is going to count as a double crochet. So that means that we are going to single crochet into that fourth chain. Now you can choose to pick up two or just go into the top of your chain. That's up to you. Just depends on how, what look you like or what you're comfortable with. Okay, so in our next chain, we are going to do a double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over, go through the chain, yarn over again and pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops, then yarn over and pull through two again and that makes a double crochet. 
we're gonna single crochet into our next chain. Double crochet into the next, and we're gonna keep repeating this pattern of a single crochet and a double crochet. Okay, oops, single crochet into the next, double crochet, and as far as tensioning your yarn goes while doing this, um, I find that cotton yarn doesn't slip very much, so I don't need to tension it real tight. Um, so I usually just go, go under one of my fingers, my ring finger or my pinky finger, and then up over my first finger. It's really just whatever you're comfortable with. If you do find that you're crocheting too loose, you can always loop it around your pinky first to make it a little bit tighter so it doesn't slide so much. So our next chain is, this one was a double crochet, we can tell because it's taller. And our next one is gonna be a single crochet. Double crochet. Okay, and we're gonna keep doing that all the way across to the end. When you get, before you get to the last stitch, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so we've got two chains left. We are going to double crochet. And we're gonna end with a single crochet. Okay, so here's the part that I do things a little bit differently. And it's really up to you, it's a personal preference. So I am going to chain one and turn. We're always going to be working the opposite stitch into the stitch from the row below. So since I ended with a single crochet, I want to start with a double crochet. And normally with this stitch pattern, you would chain three to make a double crochet. And then you would skip this stitch and you would work into this double crochet with a single crochet but I'm not gonna do this and the reason why if we keep going up with a chain at the beginning of each row you'll end up with holes on the side of your washcloth and just to give a neater appearance what I like to do is I like to just do a chain one and then I'm gonna double crochet into that first stitch Now, the other way you could do this is you could actually chain two if you need some more height, and you can also um, work into that first, work a double crochet that way. But I find that the single crochet works fine for me. So our next one is a double crochet, so we are going to single crochet into that one. And then I have a single crochet, I'll double crochet into that. And again, we are just working the opposite stitch into our stitches from below. And one of the easier ways to tell which 
stitch you're in is that if you look at it from the top, you'll see that the double crochets will have um, longer legs on them. So if you kind of lose your place on what you're doing, you can always just look to the top and see, okay, well, this one's a little bit longer. So that means that's a double crochet. This one has shorter legs on it. That one is a double, or I mean a single crochet. Or if you look at it from this side, you'll see how much taller that stitch is. But I find sometimes it's easier just to look at it from the top. So this one is a double crochet, so I will single crochet into that. Oops, I didn't grab both of them that time. All right, so I'm gonna speed this up while I go down the rest of the row. Okay, so we've made it to almost to the end of the row here. We've got two stitches. We've got our turning chain and we've got a single crochet. So I'm gonna double crochet into that single crochet. Let me show it to you a little bit closer so that you can see. Sometimes this turning chain kind of curls up on it and it's a little bit hard to see. So there's our last single crochet. I'll double crochet into that. and then our turning chain. And I am going to grab the loop at the top of the turning chain. And single crochet into that. Now, just like at the end of our last row, I ended on a single crochet. I am going to chain one, turn my work, and I'm gonna double crochet back into that first stitch. So it's gonna be right underneath of that turning chain. And then our next one is a double crochet, so I'll single crochet into that. And as you can see, that keeps a nice, uh, more solid edge down the side. So this is our pattern repeat. We are going to be working single crochets into double crochets and double crochets into single crochets from the row below. Okay, so this one was a single crochet, so that our next one will be a double crochet. Single crochet. Double crochet. Okay, so you're gonna work your washcloth for 20 rows. Now it's totally up to you how big you want your washcloth to be. If you want the same size that I have made, then um, follow the 20 rows. I do have a little tip here for you that a good way to, to figure out if your washcloth is square is to actually fold it in half like a triangle. And if your edges meet up, um, then you've reached the size that you want. But that's only if you want it to be square. If you want more of a rectangle, then keep going a little longer. Um, it's really customizable. It's up to you. This is the size that I want, and I've reached the end of my washcloth. So I'm going to trim my yarn, and I want to leave a long enough tail that I can weave it in trim that off and then I'm going to take my hook 
and grab this thread and draw it through and pull it tight into a knot. Now I'm gonna show you how to weave in your ends. This stitch is really nice for weaving in ends because it has a lot of pattern to it and, and the stitches are pretty tightly crocheted so it makes it good for holding your yarn in tight. And we do want to weave it in pretty good because these are gonna be used over and over and washed a lot and things like that. So we wanna make sure that it's nice and secure. So I'm gonna take my needle here and I'm just going to find some spots to come in. And you just kind of wanna follow some threads along just so that it's not obvious. There's really no science to this um, particular stitch. You want to, so I've got this string that's going this way. So let's follow that and then go under here. But the main thing is that you want to go far enough into the work that this thread is going to be secure. So we want to work one way in. And then we want to come back the other direction so that it won't be as likely to pull out. So now I'm gonna work back that direction that I came from. And once you've got that done, just give it a little stretch to make sure that the thread doesn't pull out once you trim it. And I'll have to work this other one in on the other side, but we're gonna wanna block this to make sure that it is nice and square. And then also there's some other things that you can do to customize this. If you want to, you can add a loop on the corner to hang it or you can trim it out um, with a single crochet around the edges. But I happen to like the way that it looks because we did that neater edge. I like the way that it looks just the way that it is. And thanks for watching.